வணக்கம் and a warm welcome to all you lovely people who are watching us live my name is ruben and on behalf of team dentist channel dot online i warmly invite you to the fourth session of day 2 of the world's first virtual implant expo 2020 ladies and gentlemen it's my privilege honor and a proud moment to recognize and invite and welcome you all along with our dear speaker for today dr kishore kumar ladies and gentlemen it's also with very proud that i wish to tell you that this is the biggest implantology event of 2020 even though if it's a virtual event we sure this event is going to help hundreds and thousands of dentists all across the globe from basics to advanced concepts of dentistry during these 11 days of power pack webinar series we aim and we hope that you make the best of it without much further ado it's now time for me to introduce our speaker for this session we have with us dr kishore kumar dr kishore kumar completed his bds from the srm dental college in chennai He completed his mastership in oral implantology from the Medwa City Hong Kong University and he finished his fellowship in digital dentistry. He has undergone various types of implant trainings and has been running his private practice since the last 17 years. For the past 6 years he complete he has been completely focusing his practice in implant dentistry and is currently running ideal dental education and academy to enhance and share his knowledge to the young and the experienced in oral implantology ladies and gentlemen presenting to you dr kishore kumar hello hello i am dr kishore kumar practicing dentistry for the past 15 years and i am doing implantology for the past 6 years being a clinician i know what are the things you have to consider when you are entering into the implantology so the things we have to know uh, which is very related to your day to day practice that is very important because each and everything what have, what we have learned from our college all those things we are implementing in our clinical practice and then we are going to uh, actually we have to make a money with that okay so we have to introduce the implantology for beginners okay so vanakkam from tamil nadu namaste from india please share your screen we are not able to see your screen thank you yes yes Look now, you can see the screen. Hey, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The, so we are going to do uh, to the cover the topic of implantology for beginners. I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. Wanna come from Tamil Nadu? It's a state of uh, India. Uh, and namaste from India. About me, I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I finished actually look, uh, give all the introduction about me. Even though I have to give some introduction to about me, so I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I finished my BDS 15 years back, and I finished the MOI and fellowship in digital dentistry. I am practitioner for since 2005. It's almost 15 years of practice uh, implantology for the past six years. Running uh, right now, I am running an uh, ideal dental education academy. and i am having the inbox digital guide fabrication so nowadays i am moving more towards the digital dentistry so which is the future and which is predictable okay so first thing every practitioner the first thing you have to ask why i have to do implants okay because patient have the edentulism if you have a edentulism means it may be a partial one or it may be a complete edentulism okay these are the condition we are thinking about the implants so partial edentulism means these are all the options now we are giving what are all the options we can give a rpd 
we can give a FPD, we can give a Maryland bridge and fiber reinforced. These are all they have their own, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. So if you know the implant means you can give an another option okay, to the patient for implants. Now there is if a patient is complete edentulism means now we can give only one option that is complete denture. But complete denture, every practitioner know about this complete denture. Once you place the complete denture means after the patient is troubling you a lot. Okay. So there is an another option that is called over denture. If you know the implant means you can give an option of over denture and other time you can give a fixed process also. So what are all the first you have to know what are all the advantages and disadvantages of FPD. Then only you can uh, take the implant towards the patients. So what are all the advantages of FPD? Mainly it's a most common treatment. Okay. Next one is it's quick. Within three days we can give everything. And satisfies contour, comfort and function. And widely accepted. And then all the dentists are familiar. That is the biggest point. Okay. So every dentist is familiar with this FPD. So what are the disadvantages? Mean lifespan of 10 years. And then 15% of abutments require endo. And failure of abutment teeth is around 30 percentage. Okay. So unnecessarily we are damaging the adjacent tooth while doing the FPD. So if you go for RPD means the advantages are cost effective and non-invasive. If you go for a disadvantages, yes, it is very less survivable and 60% only survival after four years. Morbidity of adjacent teeth happens and 44% of adjacent teeth loss happens and accelerated bone loss because it is tissue supported. So you, there is a more amount of bone loss will be happen. Next one is complete denture. What are all the advantages of complete denture? It's a cheap. And then we can give a some amount of we can restore the phonetics and aesthetics also. But some of the disadvantages are there that is reduced by force, lack of proprioception, and GI disorder because of less chewing efficiency. And food selection is very limited because if you are giving the complete denture. And psychological factor that is the playing very major role uh, when you convert the patient complete denture to fixed process means the psychological change is very big. Okay, so these are all the disadvantages. So uh, first thing, if you know, if you want to know about the implant means first thing you have to know about bone because so far we are dealing with only teeth most of the time. Okay, so. We are dealing with teeth means we know every dentist will know about the enamel, dentin and pulp and everything. So if you go for a bone means we need some amount of introduction about the bone. So if you know, if you want to know about the bone means first you should know about the Wolf's law. What is Wolf's law? Every change in function of a bone is followed by certain definite intern, definite changes in its internal architecture and its external conformation. That means form follows the function. That means bone needs function. In a simple way, we can say form follows the function. So every change in the function of a bone is followed by certain definite changes in its internal architecture and its external conformation. That is Wolf's law. So what are all the contents? Okay, we have to see within the bone. So basics of bone contents of it is matrix and then cells. In the matrix, you can see the osteoid that is organic portion. In the osteoid, you are having the proteins and type 1 collagen. So these are all the osteoid, the organic portion gives the tensile strength of the bone. If you go for a hydroxy update, that is inorganic matrix. Inorgan there is an organic matrix, something called inorganic matrix. Inorganic matrix is concerns of hydroxy update. Hydroxy update made up of calcium, phosphate and water. This is giving the rigidity and density of the bone. So what are all the cells available in your bone means there is osteoprogenital cells. This osteoprogenital cells will be converted into osteoblast and osteoblast is uh, once it is get mature means it is called osteocyte and something called bone resorbing cells that is osteoclast. So there is an osteoblastic activity and osteoclastic activity happen throughout our life that is called bone remodeling. So this is the basic of the bone and then what are all the main difference between an implant and a natural tooth the main difference between these two is that is called periodontal ligament if you have a if you have a, a natural tooth means there is an periodontal ligament which is attaching the tooth to your natural bone 
but in an implant there is a direct contact between the implant surface and your bone so this is a very very important thing you have to know because each and every area this plays a very major role so your implant is directly contact with the bone not with the predator ligament so this is the major difference between a natural tooth and a implant so what are all the advantages of implant so then only you can tell about all these things to the to the patient so implants gives the maintains the bone okay once it is also it means it holds the bone so it is maintains the bone maintains vd aesthetics phonetics and phonetics will be improved and better occlusion no palatal coverage that is the biggest advantage of the implant process and more permanent than any other option okay this is no, no one stay it will stay for longer time it will stay for life forever, forever it is not like that but we are giving them better option which is available right now okay so psychological advantage and overall health will be improved because they will improve their chewing efficiency so that way they can eat a better food so that will improve their health so these are all the advantages of implants so if you go for a implants means there is something called superior steel implant okay so superior steel implant and everything is nowadays they are doing customized implant also that is all so advanced things okay right now first if you are a beginner means first you have to know about the endosseous implants endosseous implants means this is within these implants placed within the bone that is why it is called endosseous implants so earlier linko introduced the blade implants which is uh, which is the earlier implant and it is survey only 50% after 10 years please remember that that 50% of success means 50% failure also there so please remember everything okay if you see the yes we are having the 50% of success means there yes you can see 50% you can see the 50% success means there is a 50% failure also there whenever you are a practitioner if you face the failure means that failure should be within 90 uh, it should be within the 2% 98% you should have a success rate then only you can cope with your practice okay if you have a 50% failure means it is very disaster to your practice you can't face the patient with the every day with the failure patients okay so then they introduce a cylindrical implant. Cylindrical implants means they don't have the threads. Instead of threads, they have some button-like structures in the body. And they will tap inside the band once they did an osteotomy and they tap the implants. In cylindrical implants, there is some portion of uh, implant is having the polished color. So that is also having some pocket formation and everything. So then they will come up with the screw-shaped implants. Screw-shaped implants, it's now uh, almost every company is having this screw-shaped implants. And screw shaped implants, you are having the two types. One is parallel wall, and this is a tapered wall. The wall is, is very parallel. You can see this one is parallel wall. If you see the screw like, it's a taper like, means that is tapered implants. So, implant parts. First, you should, you are entering the implantology, means first you should know the what are all the things we are deal with the implant. Okay, the implant. Implant is called either implant or a fixture. Our next one is you should know about the abutment. Abutment is the structure which is holding the process. Okay, so this abut this abutment is connected to this implant by using this screw. This is called prosthetic screw. This screw is drive by something called hex driver. This hex driver used to drive this prosthetic screw, which is connecting the abutment to the implant. So something called cover screw, which is usually placed which is used to cover the implant if you go for a two-stage surgery. That means you are placing the implant and just cover up for the three months and later you are going for the process work. So this is called cover screw. So next one is, this is torque ratchet. This torque ratchet is used to tightening this x driver. So each and every company having their own recommendation for this the connection uh, torque that means usually they are giving 20 to 30 newton torque so which is we can pre predetermined with this torque ratchet okay so that is once it is achieving the 20 to 35 uh, 20 if you place the if you adjust into 20 newton torque means once it is reaching the 20 newton torque means it breaks that's it okay so that's why we are using this torque ratchet so what are all the things you have to look when your patient come for a implant okay the first thing you have to see 
restorative space that is very very important first thing you have to look out in the patient whatever may be you are going for implant bridge or or pd or fpd anything okay if you go for means uh, restorative treatment means first you have to see the space if you don't have the space means you have to make the space by using orthodontic treatment or you can do some crown preparation or crown lengthening or you have to reduce you have to do the opposing uh, you can do the endo treatment to your opposing tooth and you have to make the space to accommodate the crown so first you have to think so blindly you should not give the advice to the patient okay first you have to make the space and then you can go for a treatment planning so so you need a implant if you put a implant means there is something called the abutment and over that you are putting some crown okay it may be a cemented or screw written okay there is always you need at least 10 mm of restorative space for the implant then only you can place the crown over the implant otherwise you are putting the implant and you can see that there is no space means it is very difficult so what are the investigations you have to do blood investigations yes you have to do the blood investigation Uh, mainly you have to check the blood diabetic and you have to see all these uh, bleeding time clotting time you have to see everything and imaging what are all the imaging we have to take photographs and iopa everybody is familiar with the iopa and opg and cbc these are all the things imaging is very playing a very major role when you are going for a planning for a implant okay what is opg opg is a two dimensional picture where you can see the landmark anatomical landmarks maxilla you can see in maxilla you can see the nasal floor sinus floor pterygoid zygoma and in mandible you can see the inferior lobe mental foramen condyle shape why you are seeing the condyle shape means that is plays a major role the chewing pattern of the patient okay so this these are all the things you can easily observe in opg which is a two dimensional if you go for a cbcd means that is three dimensional view three dimensional it's almost like a three dimensional video you can see everything okay that means you can see all the anatomic landmarks including width of the bone mylohyoid ridge and you can see the nerve courses okay because the inferior nerve travels from the lingual side of the, your uh, it will enter in the uh, mandible to the lingual side and it will come out through the mental foramen so the travel will be play a very major role if you replacing the second and first and second molars okay so you have to check everything at the same time you can assess the anterior loop of your uh, uh, anterior loop of your mental foramen so this is opg everybody is familiar with this one so you can see the nasal sin sinus floor and this is nasal floor and you can see the pterygoid and zygoma this is orbital floor Uh, this is uh, uh, our mandible you can see the inferior lobe now canals and this is a uh, mental foramen and you can see everything okay but this is a two dimensional you can see only the height of the bone we can't assess with this uh, width of the bone so if you go for a something called available bone what is available bone means available bone the bone is which is available for your implant okay so that is you have to assess with you some of the limiting structures okay what are the limiting structures this is nasal floor this is sinus and lower it is very important for mandible the inferior alveolar nerve is the your limiting structure okay usually that is the limiting structure so always you check the available bone means you there is a bone which is available above the alveolar inferior alveolar nerve okay so you have to consider like that you should not measure the bone from here to lower part of the mandible you have to check from the inferior lobe now canal to your uppermost part of your mandible so this is the available bone at the same time always 2 mm away from your vital structure that is mainly inferior lobe now if you in case if it is sinus means at least you should you should 1 mm away from your sinus floor that is the limiting structures so you always 2 mm away from your vital structures at the same time you should have 1 mm of lingual bone minimum at least 1.5 to 2 mm of buccal bone will be there why there is buccal bone is more because the buccal bone is getting more easily resorbed that's why we are placing some link towards lingually okay so lingual bone is something thicker than your buccal bone so this is cbcd cbcd means you can see the three dimensional view of the uh, uh, mandible this is the lingual concavity this is mylohyoid ridge and you can see the available bone this is the inferior lobe now canal and this is a, you can easily read the soft tissue also 
So whenever you are taking the CBCT means you have to place some cotton roll on the buccal shelf area. Why? Then only you can see the alveolar mucosa or otherwise it will appear like this. This is buccal mucosa and this is alveolar mucosa. Everything is merged together. So you always place some amount of cotton there and then you can place a, uh, take the CBCT. In CBCT you can assess everything almost. You can even you can check the opposing tooth also. So that way you can easily uh, plan your implants. So there is something called bone uh, classification by Mr. Mish. So this is based on cortical bone density. Something called everybody will know about this D1, D2, D3 and D4. Something called D5. What is D1? D1 is primarily fully cortical bone. There is no cancerous bone at all. That is called D1 bone. D2 bone is a dense to porous cortical and coarse trabecular bone. That is D2. There is dense cortical bone is available. And D3, there is a thin cortical bone will be there. And D4 means it is very little or almost crystal bone is absent. Okay. And D5 is immature, incomplete, mineralized grafted bone. Okay, that is sinus graft. If you go for a sinus graft, that is grafted bone. Grafted bone is called immature grafted bone is called D5. Okay. So what are all the things you have to know? D1, D2, 3D, 4, D4, and D5. This density is, uh, actually their uh, tactile sensation is different. Uh, it will be like that. But in our area, I didn't see the maple wood and oak wood, pine wood and everything. Okay. So always you they have to correlate with the location. Okay. The D1 bone is always, is always present in the lower anterior region. That is anterior mandible region. Okay. That is the only area where the mandible is getting uh, uh, membranous ossification and there is a condyle also, some part of condyle will be formed with the membrane system. This area is highly dense cortical bone. So this is only available in the lower anterior region in the implant concern. Okay. If you go for a D2 bone, yes, there is the anterior mandible. Sometimes you may get an anterior mandible and posterior mandible also. And D3 will be always present in the anterior maxilla mostly and sometimes posterior mandible and posterior maxilla also. And D4 is a, almost a soft bone which is available mostly, you can see on the posterior maxilla and very rarely you can see the anterior maxilla. Mostly D4 is available in your uh, posterior maxilla and D5 is, it's, you know, it's a poorly mineralized bone graft. Okay. So you can easily remember like a, it's, it is almost like a car gear. Okay, we are using a car gear means the first gear will be front and second gear will be back and third gear will be front and third fourth gear will be back. So this is the easy way to remember. That is the uh, that is what I teach in my class. Okay, so it is easily you can remember. Okay, so D1 is available only in the anterior region. In a modern way, we, these are all the old things. In a modern way, we can easily locate even a very long area also. So how? Okay. We can use CBCT and you can read the density of the bone, something called horns units. Okay, if you have a 1250 horns units or, or more means that is called D1 bone. And if it is 850 to 1250 means it is called D2 bone. It is 350 to 850 means it is D3 bone and 0 to 350 horns units is a D4 bone and less than 0 is D5 bone. Okay, so these are all the things you learn easily. Uh, measured by using your cursor itself. Okay, so whenever you are placing the cursor, you can see the horns units in the CBCD. You please remember you should not place or your cursor on your tooth or enamel, which shows a higher level of horns units. Don't you don't think that is a D1 bone? So always careful. You are placing your uh, cursor on the bone itself. Then only you can easily identify which type of bone. So, you know the uh, basics of uh, uh, the bone means something you should know what is BIC, okay, bone implant contact. That means how much of bone is coming to contact with your implant, okay, which is plays a major role, not only for a mechanical stability for the initial stage, but in later once it is healed, it will absorb the most of the stress. The implant itself don't take the stresses. Okay, it distributes the stress to the underlying bone. That means underlying means adjacent bones. Okay, so we need a better BIC means that force will distribute more amount of to, towards your bone. 
okay so that way you can get a more amount of bone around the implant so that is the reason we are having the implant design plays a major role so you have a threads and everything threads cuts and everything for a more amount they will increase the bic and something called surface condition that is the rough surface why they are giving the rough surface means thereby you can increase the surface area thereby you can achieve a better bic that is the reason each and every company gives the rough surface okay so that plays a major role for a bic that is the reason if you go for a, a basal implants means you they are giving the more amount of implant because they want to achieve more bic by increasing the number of implants but in a conventional way you are giving the less number of implants thereby you can achieve more more or less or equal or more than uh, better bic than a basal implants okay so that is the reason they are giving the less amount of uh, implants in a conventional implants if you go for a basal implants you have to achieve that bic by increasing the number of implants that is the reason they are giving the 10 implants 15 implants everything okay now whether i choose longer or wider implant yes this is another interesting topic now uh, whenever you are choosing the longer implant means why you are choosing the longer longer implants yes there is a more amount of bone will be in contact with your implant if you are using a longer implant what is if you are using the more amount of bs means you are getting a better primary stability so you can achieve a better stability and that is the reason you are using a longer implant whenever you are choosing for an immediate loading choose longer implant okay if something called wider implant wider implant if you have adequate amount of bone width means you can go for a wider implant also wider implant is better load distribution than a narrow implant always because the more amount of forces will be distributed towards the implant okay so you are getting the better platform okay so that is the reason we are using the wider implant once it is healed if it is longer implant shorter implants wider implants and everything means once it is healed means all the implant almost working like the same okay after healing takes place length doesn't make big difference okay so whenever you need a immediate load choose longer implant whenever you are go for a two stage procedure means if you are having adequate amount of width of bone means you can go for a wider implant okay then flaps flap design itself takes a, uh, another one session or two sessions okay so i just given simple incision you can go for a crystal incision and you can go for a vestibular flap incision or you can go for a two or three sided flap incision or you can go for a h incision each flap is having its own advantages and disadvantages so according to that you have the location and what are what you are going to whether you are going to the grafting you are going to the something or you are not doing the grafting or is the posterior region depends upon the thickness of the mucosa you have to choose the incision and placement concerns what are the placement concerns okay this is a very important thing you have to know okay almost everybody knew about this we have to place the implant 1.5 mm away from the uh, adjacent tooth and 3 mm between the inter implant distance but the thing is you have to note it down if you put up 4 mm diameter implant means you should not start uh, your first drill after 1.5 mm yeah, actually you have to start your first drill at 3.5 because 1.5 mm with the, your outermost portion of your implant plus if it is 4 mm means it is radius is 2 mm so you have to add 2 mm and this is 1.5 mm totally 3.5 mm away from your adjacent tooth so you have to start your first drill here then only you have to widening your osteotomy means you have to achieve this 1.5 mm from the away from your adjacent tooth the same way if you put a next implant means this is 3 mm you should not start immediately 3 mm away from your adjacent implant it should be a 7 to 8 mm away from your adjacent implant because you need a 2 mm here and it is 2 mm here plus another 3 mm totally 7 mm so you have to start 7 to 8 mm away from your first drill of your adjacent implant so this is very important most of the uh, doctors initially they did yes, actually 1.5 mm okay we can start a osteotomy here means once you start a osteotomy here means you are achieving the 4 mm of final osteotomy means it is almost touching the adjacent tooth okay so you have to concern this 
So always 1.5 mm, 2 mm to the adjacent tooth, 3 mm of inter implant distance, and 2 mm from vital structures. Why we need a 2 mm means that is the safest zone. Okay, so that is 2 mm away from your vital structure, 1.5 mm to 2 mm buckle bone after placement. Please note that this is the after placement. Okay, 1 mm from the liver. So something called Densover, which is used to, uh, we, if you have a D5 bone means, you can convert it into D4 bone. How? We can use a Densover. Densover is one of the beautiful uh, things in your, our implant. Okay. Uh, I'm not a promoter or anything, Okay, but this is really awesome. Okay. If you go for a Densover means, you can use in a clockwise or counterclockwise also. Okay, clockwise used in, if you use a clockwise means you can use it as a normal drill. If you use a counterclockwise means it is used to ask your densification, but what is also your density? It won't cut the bone. Instead of cutting, it pushes the bone towards the outer surface. So you will get a corticalization of your cancellous bone. So thereby you are achieving a better primary stability of your implant. So can be used for rich expansion also it can be used for achieve a better primary stability and it is very useful in your indirect sinus lift okay that is very important uh, very important tool there indirect sinus lift you can easily do that and patient won't feel any discomfort because we are using the osteotome something called osteotome and you are tapping on the uh, you are breaking the nasal floor means yes patient is having this most discomfort procedure according to me the indirect sinus lift you can easily do with your densa bus. So this is the thing you just you should know about this. This is densa bus. Now they are having the gold plated bus. And if you go for a surgery means something called two stage surgery and something called one stage surgery, something called direct one stage surgery or flapless. Two stage surgery means the name itself suggests two stage. That means you are. Uh, raising the flap and make an osteotomy and placing the implant and placing the cover screw and just close the site. And after three months, you, three to four months, you just again you have to make an incision and make a uh, healing abutment over there and then you can suture. And uh, after one week or two weeks, you can go for a prosthetic procedure. That is two stage. You are making it two surgeries almost. Okay. If it one stage surgery means you are placing the implant at the same surgery itself, you are placing the healing abutment. And you just close that is called one stage surgery. Flapless means yes, that is you are not at all raising the flap, you just make a punch and you go for a uh, implant placement. Flapless, uh, if you go for a free hand flapless, means at least you should have 8 mm of bone, 8 mm of width of the bone, then only you can go for a flapless. Or otherwise, you should go for a you should raise the flap and see the bone what is available here. Okay. If you buy, where you have to go for a two stage surgery, if you go for a grafting or you, you are planning for a, some soft tissue surgery, means you go for a two stage surgery. If you are having an adequate bone, you are having an adequate soft tissue, means you can go for a one stage surgery. So, if you have adequate width and adequate soft tissue thickness and everything is available, means you can go for a flapless. Okay. So, once you place the implant, means you are achieving the primary stability. Okay. The method primary stability is otherwise called a mechanical stability. Once you are achieving the mechanical stability, you don't think that stability will stay for a longer time. No, it is available for a week or two weeks. That's it. After that, it will goes down. Once the, you are placing the implant means something called you will get a biological stability. Biological stability means it's a normal healing phase of your bone. Okay, this happens once you are making an osteotomy in your bone means that biological stability will happen once the bone is surrounding bone is getting healed okay so the mechanical stability whenever the mechanical stability goes down after two three weeks three to four weeks means the biological stability will gain okay so one so this three to four week okay this is the third to fourth week your implant is at the very less amount of stability so the time you should not touch your implant. Okay. Once after it's, the healing takes place, this secondary stability, this biological stability or secondary stability will take care of everything. This mechanical stability will go down zero. Okay. So this biological stability, this secondary healing is called tissue integration. According to the uh, Brenner mark, 
this positive integration is defined as a, a direct connection between living bone and a load carrying endosis implant please note at the light microscopic level okay this is you can assess through your light microscopic level but so much of uh, uh, implant practitioners they took a uh, EOPR, OPG and see yes this is getting integrated I don't know how they can assess but definitely you can see the failure in case you are having that uh, failure means you can see the on OPG where you can see the crystal bone loss okay or otherwise you can't assess the osseo integration by using the radiograph okay this is a light microscopic level of connection between your implant and your living bone tissue okay uh, Okay. This is something established amount of uh, your osseo integration. The same thing they are giving in an elaborated manner. Okay, this is contact established without interposition of non-bone tissue between normal remodeled bone and an implant entailing a sustained transfer and distribution of load from the implant and within the bone tissue. This is given by AID. The main thing is there should not be anything between your implant and the bone. The bone is directly on contact with your implant surface at the light microscopic level that is called osseo integration okay implant placement protocol okay something called immediate implant placement something called early implant placement something called delayed implant placement this is late implant these are all the placement okay these are all implant placement when you are placing the implant okay that is called immediate if it is called immediate means okay you are extracting the tooth and you are placing immediately that is called immediate implant placement implant place fresh socket on the day of tooth extraction okay early implant means where the soft tissue healing is takes place okay with partial bone healing that is four to six weeks after tooth extraction something called delayed implant placement that is called three to four months after extraction and late implant placement after four months of your extraction something called loading protocol that is placement protocol this is loading protocol what is another loading protocol that is something called immediate loading immediate loading something called early loading something called delayed or stage loading immediate loading means you are placing the implant and within two weeks you are placing the process that is called immediate loading and between two to three months means that is called early loading and if it is more than three months means that is called delayed stage loading something called jumping distance okay so jumping distance means there is a gap between your implant and your outer outer portion of your uh, labial bone this is this gap is called the jumping distance this jumping distance if it is up to 2 mm means there is no need of grafting needed if it is more than 2 mm means you have to add slow resorbing that is xenograft Xenograft means that is a species, other another species graph between you have to add in between that. Okay. According to Tarno, no need of irrespective of jumping distance, no need of graph for irrespective of your jumping distance. In those situations, you are you have to give an ideal uh, what do you say temporization should be done, thereby you can hold the clot in the jumping distance. That is very important if you go for a, if you don't do the uh, grafting if you are having more than 2 mm of jumping distance okay. next maxillary anterior means you have to this you just see this initial osteotomy location okay maxillary anterior means you have to engage at the lingual plate first and then you have to travel apically and premolar means first palatal socket is your first so you have to start your initial osteotomy if it is second means lingual socket okay if you for a maxillary molars means lateral to your septal bone in sawing motion and mandibular anterior means lingual center to lingual socket okay that means you have to place lingual side of the socket okay center to lingual socket and mandibular molars means lateral to septal bone at the same time you have to cause you have to note these these things also no engagement on your buccal bone the maxillary anterior if you are placing your buccal bone that will resolve that is the reason they don't advise to place a buccal engagement so no engagement of buccal bone okay so use extreme caution if a rarely sufficient bone is available because the maxillary molar just above the, your maxillary molar the sinus will be open if you go for an immediate okay so angulation uh, 
and use an extreme caution to close the sphere mental foramen if you go for a mandibular premolar. And mandibular molars means you have to be very cautious about your mandibular canal because that, that is just below your extraction socket. So you have to assess that before you are placing implant. So impression procedure, once placing the implant and you, are, you should know about the impression procedure. Impression procedures can be yeah, can be an abutment level impression procedure or an implant level impression. Abutment level means abutment level you can go for a normal your crown and bridge like an impression. You can take an abutment level impression or you can go for a snap technique. Snap technique can be a splintered on or non splintered on. If you go for an implant level impression, implant level impression means you are taking the impression of your implant position. Okay, that is called implant level. You are representing the implant position of your model. So that is implant level impression. That is something called open tray impression, something called closed tray technique. Open tray technique means two or more implants means it is advisable for open tray technique. And adequate mouth opening is very important because the mouth of the open tray technique, I will show the pictures on next slides. You have to you have something called uh, the open tray impression for screws. That screw is jetting out of the uh, impression tray. So you have to adequate mouth opening is very important. Okay. And you can uh, suggest the open tray technique for the non parallel implants. And closed tray technique means it is an individual implant. You can go for a closed tray technique. And in case patient having a limited mouth opening, means you can go for a closed tray technique. This is called open tray technique because you are opening the tray. You make an opening on your impression tray. Okay, either you have mostly you have to customize your uh, tray and you can do that. Okay, you just make a hole where the implant post will setting out. Okay. So this is called open tree impression post. You place in the impression post and you are adding this screw. And you can splint this. Okay. And then you are placing the impression tray over that and you just remove the screw. Once you remove this impression post screw means this impression post will come along with your impression. And then you can add your lab analog to that and you can screw it. Okay. Then you can send it to the lab. This is called open tray technique. Something called closed tray technique. Closed tray technique means same way the closed tray impression post will be placed on your implant and you just close this orifice and you take an impression. Now you remove the impression means you, your impression is having the impression of this uh, closed tray impression post, but nothing is coming to your, your uh, impression. So then you have to remove this closed tray impression post and you have to connect it with your analog and you have to orient that flat surface and you are placing the closed tray impression post in that. Okay, this is the uh, difference between your closed tray and open tray. So something called occlusion. Okay, so whenever you are choosing, in placing the implant means the ultimate uh, load will transfer to your implant by the occlusion. That is called something called implant protected occlusion. What is implant protected occlusion? Implant protected occlusion is an occlusal plan which was designed to provide an improved longevity of both implant as well as the process. So both you have to give an occlusion which protect the implant as well as the process in a very simple manner. You have to tell like that. Okay. So that implant occlusion scheme should be like that, thereby you can protect the implant as well as the process. So occlusion, this is the most confusing topic in our uh, dentistry. Okay, so if you want to know the implant protected occlusion, means first you should know the occlusion. Implant protected occlusion. Uh, what they uh, mostly uh, uh, implantologists uh, design, they uh, just modify the, our normal occlusion. Okay. First, you should know the normal ideal occlusion. It's not normal occlusion, it's an ideal occlusion. Ideal, he is the Dr. Peter Dawson. He, uh, he described the ideal occlusion. Five most important concepts of uh, ideal occlusion. Something called centric relation. Okay. Something called anterior guides. Materials must be part of the bonds of your inner power function and something called disclusion. So, disclusion of all the posterior teeth in protrusive movement. Whenever you are doing the protrusive movement, 
your posterior get disclosed generally the jaw will move like from okay so if you go for a disclusion of posterior teeth on the balancing side what is balancing side something called working side something called balancing side working side means where you are move jaw is moving towards the side means that the side is called working side the opposing side is called balancing side so disclusion of all posterior teeth on the balancing side while doing the excursions okay if you do for lateral excursion means this disclusion happening on your posterior teeth of your balancing side disclusion of the all the posterior teeth happening on your protrusive movement so the posterior get disclusion while lateral movements okay and protrusive movements there should not should not be any interference that means non interference of all posterior teeth on the working side the same the, the balancing side you should get get a disclusion if you get a on the working side there should not be any interference okay so that is very but these are all the five things you have to consider for an ideal occlusion okay some occlusal schemes occlusal schemes means something called bilateral balanced occlusion something called bilateral balanced occlusion the name itself suggests bilateral that means the both sides balanced occlusion okay so whenever you are doing the all the excursions you get a contact on the working side as well as the balancing side why we are giving this balanced occlusion means whenever you are choosing the removal process that is complete denture you are going with the bilateral balanced occlusion in case if you are not giving a balancing on the other side means this may this will act as a dislodging force of your complete denture so the denture won't stay so we are giving the balanced occlusion for a complete denture something called groove function and something called canine guided groove function means whenever you are doing the lateral movement some the canine premolars and molar the all those things in contact with your lower teeth while doing the lateral excursion that is called groove function that means these all the function as a group and if you go for a canine guided means the only tooth in contact when you are doing the lateral excursion is the canine guided this is only the canine is in the canine guided if the occlusion itself takes a long uh, topic okay i maximum i simplified in a manner you can easily understand this is called canine guidance the canine guidance in a simple way canine guidance you can achieve only your natural tooth okay implant process yes you can give but mostly don't give you always go with a group function that is much more safer than your canine guided occlusion so canine guided even you are you are replacing the canine means you should not give the canine guided occlusion you should give the group function so canine guidance please remember canine guided occlusion you have to better act with your natural tooth group function you always go for a uh, implant process that it will be much more better options okay if you are going for a uh, complete denture on one up on one arch and you are going for a fixed process on your lower arch but that is implant supported means you have to choose bilateral balanced occlusion or otherwise your denture won't stay so in those situation you have to go for a bilateral balanced occlusion okay something called mutually protected occlusal scheme the name itself suggests okay this is mutually protecting something okay so something called mip you just close your mouth okay your teeth are all the teeth in contact with each other upper and lower means that is called mip okay whenever you are doing the maximum intercuspation the posterior teeth are in contact okay and take the force and that uh, that will protect the anterior teeth okay that will protect your anterior teeth by making the uh, contact of your posterior teeth okay the same way the anterior teeth whenever you are doing the excursions the protrusive lateral all the excursions the posterior teeth get disclosed and the anterior teeth limits the structures so that is called excursions so this way this anterior teeth is protecting your posterior teeth so and posterior teeth is protecting the anterior teeth by in mip and the anterior teeth is protecting the posterior teeth whenever you are doing the excursion so these are the limiting okay the posterior teeth limiting the uh, force within the molar itself when you are doing the mip okay 
This is called implant protected occlusion. You should not get no premature contacts. Okay, in a simple way, you should not get a high pass. Okay, no premature contacts and influent surface area of your cow, mutually protected articulation. Okay, cuspal inclination. You should not give a sharp cuspal to your crowns. Okay, it should be uh, almost uh, not more than 20 degrees. Okay, the cuspal inclination should be minimal and implant angulation to the occlusion node. That means your implant should be perpendicular to your cow of speed and cow of Wilson because that is the reason in all the uh, implant uh, initial days implant placing means why uh, see the adjacent root and you are placing parallel to the adjacent tooth you are placing the implant that is because thereby you are achieving the better implant angulation to your occlusal load okay that's something called crown height you should not give a more amount of height to your uh, crowns that will make a cantil vertical cantilever and you maximum try to avoid cantilevers and occlusal contact position should be in a manner you are achieving a, all the forces towards your implant okay so almost act like a compressive force okay. some the implant crown contour should be uh, ideal thereby you should not get the excessive of your crown other than over your implant okay occlusal materials occlusal material there are a number of materials nowadays available okay you dr kishore yes sir i request you to kindly wind up your presentation we are running short of yes, time sir. thank you yes sir this is the last slide sir okay this is the last slide uh, if you go for a uh, if, if you go for a full mouth means this is the planning okay something called bedrosian classification uh, it is uh, zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 if you have a zone if you have a bone in zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 means you can go for a axial implants if you have a uh, if you have only zone 1 zone 2 means you can go for a tilted implants if you having only zone 1 means you can go for a two axial implants and two zygoma and if you don't if you don't have any bone in zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 means you can go for a quad zygoma so this is the end of our topic okay this is our next uh, next uh, uh, topic we are going to conduct the ritual is the new ritual digital steps in implantology this is going to happening on for 23rd sunday okay at 8 a.m okay thank you sir thank you dr kishore question from dr anand how to determine the correct buccolingual angulation yeah, that is the reason you have to go with the uh, guided surgery. If you are a uh, very beginner means, you have to plan your CBCT and then go further. Thank you, sir. Next question. We see a lot of lectures which say about bicortical engagement increasing the primary stability. Is it necessary to do it? Oh, according to me, uh, uh, this is more towards the patient need. In case, if you are convincing the patient for a delay load means, yes, you can go for that, okay. Otherwise, in case patient is stick to the, uh, to the immediate loading protocol, means you can go to do that. But whenever you are going for an immediate protocol, try to engage the cut. Thank you, sir. Next question. What are the post-implant placement instructions to be given to the patient? Yes, the checkup will be very important. Okay, because patient doesn't have any sensation of your, uh, because we don't have any innervation of your implants. So, checkup is very important. The main thing is, first you have to check after one month, three months, six months, and one year. After that, every year, they have to come for a checkup, because natural tooth get adapted to an uh, opposing natural tooth, but your implant doesn't get adapted to your natural tooth. So, you have to check. Thank you. So, next question. <clears throat> Can fixed bridges be uh, a better alternative to implants? Uh, this is highly subjective. Okay. Uh, if you go for a, a implant procedure means, in case if you are having the more amount of uh, bone loss and you are having the more amount of uh, soft tissue surgery will be there means, uh, you can choose the bridge also because if you do more amount of surgery or anything means, uh, yes, it is very good for your uh, documentation or anything but patient won't accept that and patient uh, at the end of your treatment patient won't happy so uh, in those situations you are having the more you have to do a lot of amount of uh, surgical procedure means where you can avoid uh, go for you can go for a bridge okay next 
Okay, next one. Hello. Hello. Yeah, the next question is after how long can the implant be placed after extraction? You can immediately place, sir. You can immediately place after extraction. In case if it is infected socket, means you have to thoroughly cure it. You have to remove all the debris and you have to wash it with saline or you can use a metrogen. So, okay, you can wash it, but you should not use uh, metrogen. Thank you, sir. Next question. How, it, how is diabetes considered in implant placement? Implant placement. Okay. The question is very clear. Okay. So implant placement means it is not an, uh, it is a simple surgery. You are doing your diabetic patient. Okay. What do you have to do? You have to maintain the blood sugar level on the day of surgery. That is the main thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Once Next it is real, means it's everything. Sir. Thank you, sir. Next question. Any revised protocols for implant placement during the pandemic? Oh. <laughs> this uh, this pandemic itself it's very new. So there is, uh, this protocol will be evolved after this uh, once you get a pandemic over. Okay, this is uh, the infection itself uh, very new to us. Okay, so protocol means you have to maximum you have to avoid the aerosol procedures. That's it. And uh, use the adequate yeah. protections. Sure. Uh, before I move to the next question, I am going through the chats and I'm very proud to tell you that everyone is saying we need a once more session, once more session, at least 50 comments will say once more session. So please tell us when we can uh, uh, fix your date for the once more session so that all our participants yes. can learn from you. Friends, like I told you, uh, Dr. Uh, Kishore would be hosting an online implantology workshop and a come lecture series soon. Please do stay posted with dentistchannel.online so that we can help you with all the details regarding the workshop. Next question, what type of occlusion uh, is required in implant dentistry? See, this is uh, depends upon your condition. If you go for a uh, full mouth means always give a group function. Okay? Always go for a group function. That is good. Uh, in case if you are going for a single tooth uh, means you have to follow your natural occlusion and in case if it is canine means uh, you should give a canine protected that means your canine should not in contact on any excursions thank you sir last question what is the upper anterior teeth angulation drilling protocol in this uh, according to me you have to see the cbct and you have to analyze each and every patient because if the Anterior itself having a type 1, type 2, and type 3 classification will be there, depends upon their defects. Okay, according to that, we have to plan. Is there is no standard uh, angulation for that? Okay, you maximum you have to place on the native bone, which is having the more amount of success. So at the same time, it, you can it should not be so labially you have you should not place your implant. Okay, either you have to plan uh, the screw access hole should be on your palate. Or sometimes it can go up to labial. In those situations, you have to go for a cemental process. Okay. So this is the thing. Okay. You should not too much of angulation should not be there. Thank you, sir. I think one more question. I'm sorry to uh, ask you that. Yes, what sure, do you? Sure, sure, what do you? Sure, sir. What do you ultimately prefer? Is it conventional implants that is two piece or one piece implants? I always prefer to piece implant. Whenever it is possible, you can go for a two piece implant. Because once it is integrated, means it should stay for a longer period of time. In case of any process, any problem, means you have to remove this and you have to replace that very easily if you go for a two piece implant. For full more, I 100% I can say you have to go for a screw retain process. That means two piece. Okay. Then only it will be an easier. Okay. In case of any cer ceramic chip out or anything which you can easily retrieve. Okay. So in those situations, that is the reason they are giving the two piece implant. Because this implant will stay in case if it is perfectly osseo integrated, perfectly occluded, perfect placement means at least it will stay 20 years. 
do you think any process will stay for 20 years it is not possible you have to remove the process and you have to repair work you can go for a ceramic means you can go for a repair work if it is a composite means you have to layering again if it is a, uh, acrylic means you have to uh, remove the acrylic tooth and you have to replace with the new thing so these things are you should consider before placing the implant Thank mm -hmm. you.